Hi, my name is James Shepard, and I'd like to thank you for watching my videos. Uh, I wanted to make a video about frequently asked questions. I talked to a lot of sales reps. I actually talked to three brand new sales reps today on the phone, and uh, they had a lot of questions for me. And I just like to cover some frequently asked questions um, that I get asked by new sales reps. Um, first of all, the number one question I get asked is, how much money can I make? Uh, now, it doesn't always come in that form. could be, how does the commission work, or uh, how much you get per sale, and all that. Um, but basically, what most sales reps want to know is, how much money can I make? It's a very legitimate question. Uh, I'm going to answer it, though, in two different ways, two different parts of my answer. First of all, I want to talk about the front-end commission, because that's what most sales reps think of when they think of, how much can I make? Um, what you can actually expect to make each week, when you first start out in credit card processing, uh, especially if you ha don't have a real strong sales background or good connections in the community, you're literally starting from scratch. Uh, what you can expect is if you're going to work uh, a full time, uh, maybe 30 hours a week or 40 hours a week of actual time out selling to start with, you can expect to make uh, at least two brand new sales every single week. Um, that's a very good starter goal for you. Now a lot of these captive processors that you go through, they say, oh, you can make one sale a day. I'd like to see them make one sale a day brand new starting out. That's pretty difficult to do. Uh, realistically speaking, a good goal for yourself would be you need to get two sales every week. So if you can sell two new sales a week, which that is very realistic. I'm trying to be realistic. I don't want a bunch of sales reps telling me, man, you're bogus. I tried selling and I can't do that. You can get two sales a week, trust me. If you can't get two sales a week selling credit card processing full time, probably it's not the right uh, career path for you to follow. Um, if you do that, you're going to make about 500 bucks a week. Uh, $500 a week in front end commission. Now I'm going to give you two additional things you can do to increase that amount significantly. Um, two things that will work well for you. Number one, if you manage your callbacks effectively. In other words, uh, if you're out there meeting people every day, you're going to have a lot of people that want you to stop back. There's two parts to managing that. Number one, knowing which people not to visit, knowing which people are going to waste your time, telling them, hey, you give me a call back uh, when you have a chance, and then knowing which people uh, to actually go back and visit. If you manage that process effectively, you can easily get an additional one sale a week from that. Also, in addition to that, you should start getting one referral a week. If you set up your client correctly once you have their machine installed, when I do the installation, that's when I get my referrals. And I ask the people after I've done installing the machine, I say, okay, is there anything else I can do for you? Does that make sense? Does that, you, you have any other questions for me? And the last thing I say is, now one other thing, uh, my business is really mostly all referral business. I just wonder, um, is there any businesses here in the local area where you simply know the name of the business owner? That's all I ask. I say, is there a business in the area where you know the name of the business owner? And then try to make your leads that next week, your appointments the next day or so, those appointments. I was at an uh, installation yesterday that I did, and the business owner gave me three great referrals. I already sold one of them. And so that's a great way to build your business. That gives you an extra one sale there, plus an extra sale if you manage your callbacks effectively and your stopbacks. And then you're still getting those two sales a week from brand new visits where you walk in and you make a sale. But you could make realistically $1,000 a week if you did that. So two new sales, one referral sale, one follow-up or callback sale. Uh, the last way that you, the last two ways really that you can increase it significantly, is by targeting large and multi-location businesses. You know which businesses in your area are multi-location. Um, if you don't, you need to find out. Uh, you need to find businesses where when you drive around, you see three or four of them, or five or six of them. Uh, not a hundred of them. Not you know Walmart. You're not going to sell Walmart. And believe me, I've already tried. Uh, but uh, you're not going to sell them, okay? You're going to uh, you're going to get stuck in a bunch of corporate stuff. It's not going to work. These big corporations. Um, just trust me, it's a very difficult sale and it's very time consuming. You don't want to go after the corporate uh, sales. What you want to do is you want to go after maybe franchises. Maybe it's a local franchise and they've got maybe 10 franchises in your area. I sold a pizza shop uh, a few weeks ago. They have 11 franchises. Um, so when you make those sales, obviously. If you make one of those in a week, now you've got 11 sales for the week instead of two to four. Uh, that's a way to increase significantly your sales. And what you're going to find out is it does not take you that much more time to sell a multi-location business as it does a single location. It takes a lot more time to install it, of course, but it doesn't take that much more time to sell it. So try to find multi-location businesses. And secondly, go after large businesses, meaning they process in excess of twenty to $30,000 a month in credit cards. 
Um, now there's several ways to do that and what you want to do is you want to target those businesses because again it's not going to take you that much more time to sell a merchant that does thirty or forty thousand a month as it is selling one that does you know five thousand a month okay so another question I get asked about how much you make how much residual do I make now here's the real kicker now sales is hard work you all know that um, credit card processing is no uh, exception to that credit card processing sales is hard work some days it sucks some days it's really difficult some weeks you get no sales okay just like any other sales job this is not the uh, most amazing sales job that's so easy and it's not like that it's difficult it's hard it's like any other sales job if you're good at sales you're gonna be good at this job if you're terrible at sales you're gonna be terrible at this job it's a sales job and when you go out and sell uh, one of the things that you have to be looking to with this business that gives it a little bit of an edge up is the residual in the background while you're making these sales you're every time you make a sale every location you get you're adding about twenty five dollars a month onto your income until that customer cancels which if you price them correctly according to the pricing structure I've given you and if you follow up with them and give them good customer service they're not going to be canceling anytime soon and so what you in effect will do say you get four sales in a week you just added a hundred dollars a month to your income okay so you just gave yourself a twelve hundred dollar raise um, I've worked in as a marketing manager for a large company before and I remember fighting for a three thousand dollar raise I said man I really want to get a three thousand dollar raise and oh, I just fought and fought and fought for that and because uh, I want to make three thousand dollars more a year I wanted to get a salary bump I give myself a three thousand dollar salary bump every month um, because I sell enough accounts uh, to generate the residual income to bring in two to three thousand dollars a year in additional income um, so keep that in mind that in the background you're constantly building up and building up and building up this residual and so in a month where you have a slow month you have a slow week and you think man this is this is terrible I gotta get a second job to keep this thing going I maybe I should quit this just remember every time you get a sale yeah you're getting the upfront commission sure you're getting five hundred a thousand maybe two thousand a week but you're also getting that residual always focus on the residual the residual is what it's all about okay a couple other questions I'm gonna answer real quickly I get asked this question how bad is the competition how difficult is the market how competitive is it first of all it depends on your market if you are in an area that's more rural like I'm in I'm in central Pennsylvania um, biggest town around me here is I've got about 50,000 people in it and that's a large town um, in my area I don't have a whole lot of competition I mean I have some um, but as far as I don't go into places and they say oh I've had three or four people here in the last week I don't get that now I've talked to some sales reps I have that are in like the city of New York uh, they're in large they're in Los Angeles they're in uh, San Francisco big cities like that the competition can heat up quite a bit and you can uh, have to deal with that a little bit more um, if you're gonna deal with it just put it in your opening pitch walk in and say hey my name is James Shepard you're never gonna guess what I sell I sell credit card processing aren't you shocked to have someone else in here that sells that just make a joke about it and just start off with that and just start talking about it and just say man how many people have you had in here in the last month selling credit card processing and they say oh man I've had four or five people boy oh boy it's unbelievable our industry is just getting so competitive and just start talking to them about it and break the ice but the other thing is remember our competition is kind of the best thing for us because we sell interchange plus pricing and not very many people do that yet and uh, it's good that they do that say boy I'll tell you one thing no matter how many people have been in here I bet none of them have offered you interchange plus pricing have they and they're gonna say no you can move forward with your sales presentation uh, and you can usually save them money also another thing to realize one thing that's good about the competition most uh, merchants are used to switching processors every so often so their loyalty doesn't build up very quickly also when someone makes a sale they normally don't provide any customer support any customer service any one-on-one -on -one contact and so they don't have any loyalty at all to the person they're with you're gonna have to change that for you but it's a kind of a good thing for you that there's a lot of competition because they change hands a lot so they're comfortable changing hands I'll put it that way uh, two other questions three questions um, how do you move up and if I move up you don't uh, the way that you move up is it's your own business so I'm gonna give you a couple things that you can look up on your own time and, and search about research about becoming a registered ISO registered ISO with Visa and MasterCard look it up on Google cost $10,000 to become a registered ISO 
What does it mean to be a registered ISO? It means you have your own brand image that you can promote, your own company name, you can hire your own employees, all of your contracts will have your name on it, all of the statements that are sent to the merchant will have your logo and your name on them. That's how you move up. And uh, you can actually have your own business register officially with Visa and MasterCard. And you need to do that right away. I'm just saying if you're if you're a big time salesperson, you think, man, what's the future in this business? The future is you can build your own business, have your own registered name of Visa and MasterCard and become a major player in the processing industry. Um, how much follow up is required with customers? Uh, I would say good rule of thumb here, you're going to get about one call for every customer that you have each month. That doesn't mean every customer is going to call every month. Some new customers might call you three or four times a month. But if you have 100 customers, I would expect to get about 100 calls every month uh, from customers about customer service issues. And then what service you provide is up to you. Uh, and uh, that is the end of our frequently asked questions. If you have any other frequently asked questions, uh, do me a favor and put them in the comments section and I'll try to answer them there. So if you are watching this and your question wasn't answered, uh, look down in the comments section or enter it and I'll do my best to answer it there. Thanks so much for your time. Hope you have a great day today.